good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, it's uh, always a pleasure to be with you in this way. Um, welcome to the fifth of our Q&As with our patrons. And tonight uh, we're with uh, Bishop Paul Bays, Bishop of Liverpool. Good evening, Bishop Paul. Thanks, Kieran. And hello, everybody. It's great to be with you. It's uh, lovely to be with you. Um, just to kind of remind people why we're doing this. Some people ask us occasionally, what is a patron? Why do you have them? And what's this Q&A stuff all about? So the Open Table Network is becoming a charity. We're hoping to have news of registration very soon indeed, which is really exciting. And we've asked several notable Christians who identify as LGBTQIA+, or as allies, to become our patrons. And a patron is an advocate. Uh, uh, so they advocate for our network, they speak about us and support us in the public eye. Um, and we're proud that they believe in what we're doing and we want to have their names associated with us. And so uh, just a brief uh, intro to Bishop Paul for those who may not have had the pleasure of meeting him. Um, when he became Bishop of Liverpool in 2014, um, in his inaugural sermon, Bishop Paul spoke of an open table made by a poor, generous carpenter who offers a place at the table to anyone who wants to sit and eat. And as you may imagine, um, as two lay leaders in the audience, my husband Warren and I were quite astonished and, and encouraged by this conversation. And so then in the following year, in July 2015, Bishop Paul visited the first open table community in Liverpool and charged us with a mission to give the love that you share and the openness that you manifest as a gift to the wider church which struggles to receive it. Bishop Paul has become an, expert, an outspoken ally. In 2017, he became a patron of Pride in Liverpool and marched with the Christians to Pride group. We believe the first diocesan bishop in the Church of England to do so. And then in 2018, uh, Bishop Paul became chair of the Ozan Foundation, which tackles prejudice and discrimination on the grounds of sexuality and gender in religious organizations. In 2019, he published a book called The Table, Knowing Jesus, Prayer, Friendship, Justice, which expands his vision of Christ Church as an open table and gives the Open Table Network a plug too, which is nice. And in 2020, he became co-chair of the Global Interfaith Commission on LGBT plus lives, which is calling for an end to violence and criminalization against LGBT plus people and for a global ban on conversion therapy, which has been much in the news of late. So perhaps we will come to that later and then. So in your book, The Table, Bishop Paul, you wrote about how growing up as a church warden's son in Bradford, uh, shout out if there's any Yorkshire folk here tonight, um, you wrote about how your spiritual and social life in the late 50s and 60s was formed by Sunday school, church choir and youth group until you went your own way at university. So what led you to come back to the practice of your faith as an adult? Yeah, I was, a, I was a Christendom child. I went to Sunday school, as lots and lots of people did in those days. But my dad was a church warden. My mum was involved in the church. I sang in a choir, all that stuff. And, and then when I was a, a teenager, 17, 16, 17, before I went off to college, um, um, I, I gave all that up. I went to WH Smith. That was the only bookshop in Bradford. And, and I picked up loads of paperback books about Taoism and Buddhism and, and then the occult and lots of things that were, seemed to me much more exciting than Christianity. And I went off to university. I was there for three years and, and uh, my degree was in drama. So I did drama. And uh, uh, halfway through that, my mum fell very ill. She had breast cancer and she, she died young. And, and uh, so, so I was, everything was shaken for me. I'd given up my faith as a Christian, but all these paperbacks weren't doing me much good. And, and, and in the end, I had a nervous breakdown and, and, and I had to be tranked. Uh, uh, I was on Librium for uh, three, three or four months. Uh, and and, and, and it, was, it was actually a couple of professors of theology who brought me back to faith. Uh, uh, I, I, in the drama department, we were doing a course with the theology department about the roots of drama, which were in Greek religion and stuff. And, and, and these two professors of theology were bright, bright guys, but they were also people of faith. And I'd never met anybody. I, you know, I was so cocky at the age of 18, I thought I'd given up on faith. Suddenly here were these guys who, who had a faith and who also could think harder than I ever could. And that made me re-examine my faith. And I came back to it as an adult. 
uh, uh, in, 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 in the spirit of wanting to ask questions, uh, get, get those questions answered, live with uncertainty. So I was converted by two professors of theology, and I always say that with pride. Marvellous. Thank you. You also tell a beautiful story of being at a service and being sceptical, but watching someone spontaneously appear to do a, a like a liturgical dance, which was a beautiful image of just seeing faith in action. This was when I was a student and it was a student church. It was a, a, a charismatic evangelical church. I wasn't used to that way of being a Christian. And, and this kid just got up and danced as we were singing. And, and a, a, a bit like the movie when Harry uh, met Sally, I just, I just thought, you know, uh, wh whatever, she's, whatever she's got, I'd like some of that. I want some of that. <laughs> and, and I, and I, because she was able just to express her love for God. And, and at the time, it was all up in my head. And it hadn't climbed down out of my head into the rest of me. So, so that's when I first realized that actually faith was about all of yourself. Faith was about your body, not just about your mind. And, and that was a big conversion moment for me. Excellent. That's uh, um, an extraordinary uh, kind of transition from, you know, childhood uh, faith to uh, more mature, uh, yeah. more mystical faith, perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm curious um, about your training for ministry. So you trained at an ecumenical college, Queen's Birmingham. And uh, one of the ways they expressed that ecumenism was an exchange program with the Roman Catholic Oscott College. Um, and, and that programme was run by the Vice Principal Patrick Kelly, who later became Archbishop of Liverpool. Um, so how did that ecumenical experience in your training inform your ministry now? Queen's was half, well not quite half, it was, it was almost half Anglican and almost half Methodist. And then there were a few uh, Orthodox, Finnish Orthodox and, and uh, Estonian Orthodox people there as well. So it's quite a broad thing. But of course the Roman Catholic Church was not part of that. And then we had this link with Oscott in the Midlands uh, and, and so we, we had uh, 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 two weeks uh, staying with them and they had two weeks with us. Uh, uh, what you learn from any experience about the other is that they're not quite as other as you thought. Um, um, on the other hand, you, you know, people of integrity stick up for what they believe is right. Um, and, and so we were able to connect with these people as human beings, uh, but, but also as people who, 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 who believed what they believed for a reason. And, and when, when, when human beings exchange with one another, you, you learn a lot. The, 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 the bad news at, at, at the minute, if I can jump on a soapbox for 30 seconds, yeah. and, and I, 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 I spoke about this in a sermon that's going to be preached in Liverpool just after Easter, because of course you record everything in advance, is that because there's so much aggression in, the, in, in today's culture, and everybody's in echo chambers, you, you never get that opportunity to connect with other people as people. And, 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 and the ecumenical endeavor, so now it's my privilege to be the Anglican chair of the Anglican Methodist uh, uh, group that tries to see how, how we can work together better. And, and, and it's just great to be able to do that and reconnect with people and learn from them. That, that, that if any, more than anything, that's what I learned from the ecumenical experience. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, we've got, we've got more in common than makes us different, haven't we? There's a shared humanity and there's, and the, and, and there's a shared compassion that, that, that actually, you know, people, some people give them the chance, what they'll show you is what they think, and, and you'll get that, that rather glossy mental picture. And then suddenly things, things happen, things go wrong. And, and, and so, so when I started as a minister, um, um, uh, as, as a deacon, I was ordained uh, up in the northeast of England. I was ordained deacon, and then the guy who, who, who was my boss uh, uh, he, he was a great guy, but, but, but he really saw himself as the father of the family. And then uh, his marriage fell apart after I'd been there six weeks. His wife left him, not for somebody else. It, it, it just fell apart. And, and, and he was really frightened that people would see him as being a bit of a failure. And the mother's union in that church, gr group, of, group of women, mostly elderly women, wrote a letter to the bishop. And the bishop rang up my boss and said to him, the mother's union have written to me. And my boss thought, oh, my God, they're going to they're gonna blame me for my marriage falling apart. And what the mother's union had written was they'd said, don't worry, bishop, we'll look after him. In other words, the, the Christian faith is a family of broken people who look after each other. And, and, and I learned that six weeks in, and, and I've done my best never to forget it. Beautiful, thank you. Um, so then as a young priest, you served as a university chaplain in London uh, and you've described um, seeking to build church through small groups of students and 
staff and others committed to serving God through social action. So what did you learn from that experience? It was fab. It was, it was, it was set up, the West London Chaplaincy was set up in these secular <laughs> colleges. Mostly. And, 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 and so you didn't have a chapel. There was nowhere to meet. So, so we, we, we met in small groups and we had 60 of these little groups every week. There were four chaplains and a number of other people we called hired guns who ran these groups. And they met in departments and in halls of residence where the students were. And, and then we had a number of houses with, with vicarages waiting for vicars. We moved in communities of students. So, so small group community and interaction with each other and intimacy in small groups but became for me um, uh, the royal road to, to, doing, to doing faith properly. And, 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 we, and we connected in the college with uh, uh, the, 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 the community action, COMAC, the COMAC group. So we did uh, 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 soup kitchens and, 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 and all that kind of stuff, took, took coffee around the, the, the folks who were sleeping rough in central London. And, 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 and that, that connection, and then I got involved in CND, Christian CND, and, 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 and other things. So the, the social action stuff, the small group stuff and the faith stuff all, all grew together. And, and, and I've tried in, in Liverpool, we say we're asking God for a bigger church, make a bigger difference. And, and I've always tried to hold those things together. And I, I think I learned that in London more than anywhere else. Marvellous. Thank you. And you've also written movingly quite recently about, um, I believe it was a, a priest that you went to for spiritual direction during that time. The Bill Kirkpatrick, and, it, and he was he's from Canada, Bill. He was a partnered gay guy, and, and, and he and Richie, his partner, they lived in Earl's Court. And, and uh, this was just at the time, if, if, you've, if you've seen It's a Sin, it was at the time It's a Sin was on. Uh, the, the, it, it was set. Uh, um, um, uh, AIDS was just beginning to be understood. And, and the gay community, in any case, was marginal. And, and Bill had this presence ministry. He, he would go out on the streets, he'd go to the Cologne pub. He'd, he'd connect with people. Uh, and, and Richie's partner that set, set up a charity uh, which was designed to help uh, sex workers, young male sex workers in central London. Between them, they did extraordinary work. And, 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 and I used to go and see Bill about once a month to talk about my own prayer life and about how I could get close to God. And, 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 and Bill was a, a, a deep, he's passed away now, but he was a deep, profound influence uh, on my own life because he tried to be there for people where they were. And, and he was out on the street with people. And it was a fantastic uh, privilege to learn from him. Thank you. I was really moved to read that story. That's um, that reflections on the Via Media News website, which we can share a link to um, perhaps in the email afterwards. Um, so um, so from London, you, you um, spent time in parish ministry um, uh, and you also complemented the ministry of churches you inherited by planting new congregations yeah. to bring Christianity to people who the churches weren't reaching. So um, that finding appropriate ways to plant churches has been a central part of your ministry. I'm really curious to see if there are lessons that you might, that, that you might have for the Open Table Network as a fresher expression of church. It was really what I'd learned at, at, at the university chaplaincy about small groups that I, that, that I carried through into this. So in one of the places where I was a vicar, we, 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 we planted a new service, which was designed for younger families and, and more kid friendly. Uh, we, we didn't want to replace the one that we'd got. We thought that worked really well for older people. So we planted a new one. And that was the, that was the idea both end. And we used to have the traditional service. And then when the traditional service finished, we had a coffee time for everybody. And then the new service people came to coffee first and then, and then we had the new service. So that was one way of doing it. But then when I moved to, my, to another church where I was for 10 years, we did it in a small group where it was a fragmented community on the edge of Southampton and, 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 and lots of little cul-de-sacs. That was how the, the, the town had been built, a new town. And, 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 I, and I thought in this fragmented community, let's fragment the church. Let's have lots of small groups, uh, just the same as I did in the university. And, 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 and that worked. We met in the small groups. We learned in the small groups. We shared. It was all age. Uh, and, and, and then Sundays we'd come together as well. And, and, and th th that put me on to the fact that you could do church in different ways. Mm. The, the, the key thing is not, you know, let's find a funky way of doing the church. The, the key thing is what do people need? Um, and, and, and in what way is, is church not reaching people? So, so when I first came to Open Table, which I, I think you probably asked me about that later, but I, I was profoundly moved by the way in which, in which Open Table Liverpool was, was, 
was, was shaped around connecting with people who might not find it easy to connect uh, with everyday church. And, 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 and that principle, what, what, who, are we, who, who do we want to talk to? Who do we want to be with? Where do we want to be? That's the question. Not what shape of the church should it be? What songs should we sing? You know, how big should, how big should our organ or worship band be? Those are in, interesting questions, but they're not the main one. The main one about church planting is, who is it you want to be alongside? And, and, and how can you shape what you're doing so those people feel at home? Well, that uh, does lead us nicely on to, um, you know, how you've walked alongside the open table, the first open table community in Liverpool and, and now beyond as a patron. Um, so when I mentioned your first sermon at Liverpool Cathedral, where you spoke about the open table made by a poor, generous carpenter. So, um, and that gave... Um, gave me confidence to begin our dialogue, which has brought us here with you today. So how did you feel when you discovered an open table on the cathedral doorstep in the next church? I, th I, th I thought it was great. It was, it was, it was very ironic because I preached about the table uh, before ever I came, I, I started writing the sermon before ever I came to Liverpool. So I didn't know anything about open table. And, and, and then uh, my predecessor, Bishop James, I know that he'd connected with Open Table in his time. And, and, and so um, um, I learned about it, heard about it, accepted an invitation to come along. That was it the sixth or the seventh anniversary service. Seventh, and it, yes. Anyway, and we, and we, so, so, so I, I, I rocked up there and, 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 I, and I brought with me a picture which, is, um, um, which was painted, it, you, you can buy it now, you can get, you can get a print of this picture. It, it was painted by a woman called Yvonne Bell. Uh, so, so Yvonne is a professional vestment maker and icon painter, uh, and, and, and she's partnered to Carol, and, and Yvonne and Carol were in my church when I was a vicar, that, the, the, the church that had the small groups. And, and um, um, so, so I, took, I took that picture along, and I met the people from Open Table over coffee, and, and, and then, and then it, it, it's very intimate space, so I was sitting down talking to people, and I brought the, I brought the picture as a kind of visual aid for my talk. But in the middle of my talk, I thought, you know, here are people who are living out. So that the picture's called Urban Mission. And the, the, here are people who are living out what, what this picture's about. Um, um, and, 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 and I looked at some of the people, some of the older people there, who, who'd lived all, all, all through um, um, the, the, the years of, of, of rampant homophobia in government, Section 28, all that stuff. Younger people, trans people who, who, who really found it difficult and maybe sometimes dangerous to go out on the street. And here was a safe place for them. I said, here's a picture of Jesus. And I held up the picture, the, the, the uh, urban mission picture. And, and, and I said, here's Jesus among hurting people. I said, please don't think I've come to tell you that you're the hurting people and here's Jesus helping you. I said, you've got inside yourselves because of the fact that you've found this place what we now call a brave space, safe space. Um, uh, you've found a place from which you can give a gift to the church. So, so I said that in my talk. And, and, um, uh, and so halfway through the talk, I thought, what am I doing taking this picture home with me? So I said, and by the way, you can have this picture. It's a gift. So, so I, left, I left the picture behind. I said to the Open Table Liverpool community, it's not that you're these hurting people and you all need Jesus to help. You do. We're all broken. But that's not the point I'm making, I said. The point I'm making is there's light in the middle of pain. And people who are broken can share that light. You know, the Leonard Cohen song, Through the Cracks, that's where the light comes out and gets in. Uh, so, so, so that's the painting I shared, Yvonne's painting. And if you want to get hold of that painting, you know, a, a, a print or a card of that, you can get it on Yvonne's website. Um, uh, a quick, quick plug there for Yvonne, who's a friend of mine. Uh, so, so, so that. Um, it, it, it was interesting, Kieran, because just before uh, I started preaching, you asked me if, if, if you could record it. And I said, yeah, I always say, yeah, no problem recording it. Same as we're recording this, this gig that we're doing now. Um, um, but what I didn't know was that people who, who disagreed with me about inclusion, were, were the, the only time that sermon's ever been written down is by someone who, 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 who got someone else to, um, uh, to notate it, write it all down, so that they could take exception uh, with me to, 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 to what I'd said. Uh, so, so the script is more famous than the picture, but the picture is what matters to me. And there it is on the screen. That was one of the catalysts for Open Table becoming a network. Um, July 2015, uh, you came to us and allowed us to publicise it. Um, and your, sp your sermon went viral. I believe there was an archbishop in Africa who commented on it. Um, I'm afraid so. He didn't like yes. it. 
No, I can imagine. And um, I remember I remember it well. And that was when the same month we had the second open table community begin in Warrington in the United Reformed Church, continuing the spirit of ecumenism that we began in Liverpool. So so that 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 month was a particular catalyst for us to grow um, into a network. It's been an extraordinary time. So we're coming up to our anniversary of, uh, of that in July this year, which we will mark in some way. I'd be interested in your, your reflection on what's emerged from that ongoing dialogue that we've had, you know, since that first meeting in July 2015, you then um, spoke to us about becoming a patron of a local LGBT plus charity and um, it, pride in Liverpool seemed like a good match. And then, um, uh, and then you became a patron for them and marched with the Christians at Pride group and spoke to 8,000 assembled marchers. So what response did you get to your public support for Pride? Inevitably, it was a mixed response. The, uh, you, you know, what I, 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 I've written about this actually. When I, when I stood up there, I, I, I appeared at, at Liverpool Pride that year um, straight after the chief constable of Liverpool, because because Liverpool, the, the the LGBT police group in Merseyside Police is very strong, and and, and so they were there. Uh, Christians of Pride was there. A, 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 a fair few people it, that that grew over time, but a, a fair few people, and 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 of course the church doesn't it doesn't have a very good reputation in the wider LGBT community, and sometimes it, it richly deserved bad reputation. So so when I was speaking, I was thinking. You know, this, this is, this is, these, some of these people are going to be thinking, what's he doing up there? And, 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 and that was not the response at all. What, the response I found uh, from the LGBTI community in Liverpool was uh, just hugely welcoming and positive. Uh, another example of, of, the, of, of the fact that folks who are on the edge have, have got a huge amount to teach. And, 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 and then I was able to walk. Uh, it, inevitably, if, if uh, I don't know where you're from, the folks who are listening into this, but if you've ever done a pride march wherever you are, you, you may have found that there are an, a number of uh, more conservative people who'll be protesting against it. And, 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 we got, and we got that on the pride march. And, and that was symptomatic of some of the responses that I did get from, from others in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the wider church and in the wider world. Um, um, so, so I got a, I, I, I got a lot of, um, um, I, I would have to say abusive, uh, uh, c communications from people. I didn't know any of these people. Uh, um, in, in, in my own diocese, some conservative colleagues, they, they did have the courage to come in the room with me and to talk and we shared. Uh, but in the main, the abuse I got was anonymous. Uh, and, and, um, and after a while, you just get used to that. And, 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 and now, uh, 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 normally speaking, when, when I try to speak up for things, such as in the conversion therapy debate, I, I, I said something a couple of days ago on the social media, and, and the very, very little pushback. Now, people roll their eyes and think, you know, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? So, so, but, but at first, if you put your head above the parapet, um, uh, in, in this anxious and frightened world, uh, uh, p p p people will use you as a lightning conductor. And, 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 and I, I just, you, know, you, you just have to bear that if you, if you want, as I do, to defend people who are on the edge of things. It seems like an unenviable position at times because there are some people who feel that you've gone too far and there are others who believe you haven't gone far enough. Um, how do you hold that tension? Being a bishop, you're, you're supposed to hold the, the unity of the church, but the church is the church is an arguing group of people who live in the same room, and, and and that's how I see it. You know that I hold the unity of the church by saying to people who disagree with me, "There's room for you here too. There's room for you in this room. I'm not going to exclude people." Mm -hmm. So we, we we had an experience with a, a, a diocese in Africa, conservative people. Who, who, partly because of what Bishop James, my predecessor, had, had said, because he also went on a kind of inclusive journey, and, and, and partly because of what I had said. Uh, that, 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 the, these African guys said, w w w that, that's it, we're not having anything to do with you anymore. And, 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 and my, my line with that has always been, other people can close the door, but I'm not going to lock it. Uh, if people want to open it again, the, the door's open. Um, and, and that's not to say that we all agree or disagree and therefore it's okay to marginalize people. It's, it's, it's not to say that, that um, uh, you, you can't struggle for inclusion as I try to do within the Church of England to ask for change. It's not to say you can't do that. But it, but it is to say 
that, that, that we respect and make room for people, especially those that we, including those that we, that we disagree with. But, but for me, the key thing is, how are we doing with the folks who are on the edge of things? How, how are we doing with, with, with those who are marginalized and opposed and excluded and oppressed? And among others, among lots of others, but the LGBTI community ha has been in that position, not only with respect to the nation, but in particular with respect to the church. And, 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 and so there's a real need for, to, I think, to, to, to advocate for inclusion. And, and, and I've tried to do that in a way that makes room for disagreement. Some people don't want to engage in that, that, that that's their business. Um, um, uh, but but, but, but the, the, the key thing is, I, I, am, am, I, am I going to try to stand for those who are on the edge of things? And, and the answer is, I'm in a very privileged position. I, I'm a white male, cisgendered, partnered, to a heterosexual bishop. A huge amount of privilege, a huge amount, therefore, of unconscious bias, and 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 and, and, and I'm well aware <coughs> that, that, that I'm making mistakes all the time, including the mistakes I never know about. Um, um, but what I intend to do is to make room for people, and, and part of that was to listen to people like you, Kieran and Warren, and and, and the leaders of Open Table. So, so I, I made a speech to the General Synod in 2017 uh, in the conversion therapy debate, and and. People may not remember this, but in July 2017, the General Synod voted to ban, to recommend that the government ban conversion therapy. That's still where we are, asking them to ban it. But the Synod voted for that. And I spoke in that debate. And the speech I wrote, I ran past you, Kieran, I remember, so that I could be sure that the language I was using wasn't unconsciously biased about saying things that unconsciously were just marginalizing people further. And you wrote back with a number of suggestions for change, and I included all those suggestions for change and gave a speech. And, 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 and that, I hope, is a model of what I'm trying to do. It's not about me on my big platform. It's about people without a voice having the opportunity to use my voice. And, and, and that, that's how I see my role. And so maybe related to that, um kind of living with difference and, 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 and the challenges of that. Um, it's a question that we've asked um, all the patrons so far um, for insight on how, how do you feel that we can sit together at an open table with people who would disagree with or even exclude us as LGBT plus Christians? So living in love and faith, which is the, the, the Church of England's attempt to look at these things wisely, uh, uh, um, the, 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 they're trying to bring about, and here in this Diocese of Liverpool, we're doing this, my colleague Bishop Bevel is leading on it. And at first we talked about safe space. Let's have a safe space. Uh, but, but, but it's hard for, for, for many wounded people, including LGBTI people, to sit it safely with people who candidly, gentle and kind as they might be, uh, do not believe that they're going to heaven, do not believe that they should exist. And, and, and so alongside safe space, uh, we, we've brought the idea of a brave space. Mm -hmm. and, and your own blog, Kieran, A Brave Faith, has, 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 kind of prefigures that, really. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so so if, if, if you, it, nobody should put themselves in a situation where they're going to be triggered and, and hurt and depressed. Uh, but if, if, if LGBTI people uh, have the support and, and, and the inner strength to be able to sit in a room with people who disagree. I hope that they will, because it, it, it is by seeing, looking into people's eyes, exactly as I said much earlier with ecumenism and stuff, it's by, it's by making the, the reality of your humanity something that people can't avoid. So people talk sometimes about all these issues in the church as a debate. I, I can't stand the word debate because you're talking about people's lives here. It's not, you know, like, like the Oxford Union or whatever, a bunch of bright kids who might as well argue either way. It, it, it's not about, let, let, let's not look at each other, let's just look at a book. It, it's about, let's lift our eyes and look in each other's eyes. And if we're going to do that, then the eyes of people who are oppressed need to be in the room, hard as it can be. I'm not triggering people. I'm, I'm not saying to people, put yourselves in a dangerous place. But, but if you have the inner security and a network of support, and, and if there's a possibility in a structured way to talk to people who disagree, please do that because it is through meeting human beings that people change their minds. We had a question from uh, the audience, which is kind of related to that actually. Um, so uh, Diana's asked, um, could, could, 
could you expand on the ways that the Anglican Church could make the living in love and faith process safer or braver um, for um, LGBT plus people whose very being in relationship with God is open to scrutiny over the coming two years, sometimes by people who have an argument to win. The folks who are leading on the process, LLF, are, 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 trying, to, are trying to put it in, in a different space from let's have an argument to win. Um, uh, that, that there are some, of course, there are some Christians who, who they, they live in their heads. They, they think that the main thing is uh, uh, what, what they would describe as clear teaching. Now, now, now I, I, I believe that Jesus was clear, but he was also human. And, and so his clarity comes through his humanity. Uh, you, you can't render it down into a series of statements. It's about real life. And, 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 and just to repeat what I said a minute ago, I, I, I don't... I, I'm not saying to people that to, to, to especially not to LGBT plus people that they should put themselves in a dangerous place. It, it, you, you, the, 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 in, in Liverpool, the LLF process, we've appointed chaplains. We've 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 put together uh, protocols so that people who enter the room know what the what the norms will be. Um, uh, but 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 nonetheless, the, the church is and can be an abusive place, especially for people, for example, who remember experiences. Of conversion therapy, and 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 as as Kieran was saying, uh, th this week and the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, that is that issue, the issue of what the government's going to do about about conversion therapy has come back to the fore, and 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 the, the the if if someone enters into a conversation with you, with the assumption that who you are needs to be changed to someone better, that then then then, then there is no reason why you should sit there. If, if people are prepared to engage with you, e even though those people themselves deeply believe that, that the Bible says things that, 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 that are different from what you might believe, I think that's a different kind of conversation. And we know people, of course we do in the Living Out Network, who, who they would describe themselves as Christians who experience same-sex attraction. Um, um, but, 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 you know, I would say that they were gay people or bi people or lesbian people, and, 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 and they have chosen to be celibate. Well, that's cool. You know, the, the, there are lots of straight people who choose to be celibate. Um, um, the, the, if, if you, it's as if you had a, uh, it's as if you had a, a debate on 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 marriage, on on uh, opposite sex marriage, with someone there who was a monk or a nun or something, and everybody who was married turned to the monk and nun and said, you know, get to it. Where's your spouse? Go and find one straight away. We don't do that in the church because we understand that that that, that being a celibate straight person is a choice that's to be honoured. And what I want to see is a church where being a partnered LGBT person or a, 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 a celibate, the, 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 both of those things are, are there to be honoured. But nobody turns around and says, uh, uh, um, I like what I am and I want everybody to be like me. So get to it. I don't believe that that's of God. Well, we've had another question from uh, our uh, listeners who um, that speaks into, into that. Um, so... It's somebody from our diocese, Liverpool, who um, is a, is in a in a difficult situation in their church, which isn't affirming. And in summary, they're asking, "Should I leave a church which isn't inclusive when I feel it causes damage?" Thank you. It, 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 that, it, that that's that's a great question, and and uh, especially if maybe you've been in that church for a long time, and, and all your friends are there, and and or the church has done great things for you and they've cared for you and stuff and 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 and, and they do th th there are moments of course when when, when people have to say I, 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 the, the, I love you all but do you have room for me and and if the church says well we love you too but we've only got room for you if you do this and this and this well then the moment to the moment to move on may come and 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 I and I and I grieve about that I regret that of course it happens in lots it, it doesn't only happen in this area of our lives um, um, there, there, are, there, there are churches that have got, uh, 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 you know, other ways. So, for example, there are some deeply conservative churches who would ostracize somebody if they got divorced, a, a, a straight person if they got divorced. In some parts of the Anglican communion, if, if as with my vicar, I was telling the story earlier, if, you, if, if your wife leaves you, even if it's got nothing to do with you, if your wife leaves you, you're then not allowed to minister. 
uh, that doesn't happen, of course, in England, but, but, but in other parts of the Anglican Communion, that's the case. Even if it's got nothing to do with you, even if it's not your fault. And, 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 and in such a case, you have to leave that church. And, and, and so there are moments when relationships simply cannot go on. And, 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 and I think to anybody who's in that awfully difficult situation, I, I hope it would be possible. And, and, and I mean, certainly if you need someone to draw alongside you, get in touch with the Open Table Network or get in touch with me. Uh, but I hope it'd be possible for that to be straight, straightforward, honest conversation, gentle conversation with the people in the church. And, and, and then if it came to a point of separate ways, that people would be able to understand why that had happened. Uh, but but, but if, if, if you find yourself in a situation where, every, where no one knows about your orientation identity, where, 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 people, are, where people are just you know, assuming that we're all the same here and, and, and where there is homophobia going on, uh, the, 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 then, then you need to stay, you need to survive that. It, 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 it's, it's not right that it should happen to you. And, and, and if by, it, the best way to do that is by, is, is by getting support and talking it through and then if there has to be having an amicable part in of the ways, but, but, but if it's happening day after day, you need to withdraw. And uh, you've had experience of that within, the, within your own family, haven't you, of um, your niece and her partner uh, who uh, yeah. were given a very conditional welcome by a C of E church. Yeah, afraid so. I mean, they, were, they, were, they, they had a great time in London. They, 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 they got two children. That their, their kids were baptised in London and then they moved up north and, and, and went to the local C of E church and they were not welcome there. And, 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 in, and, in, and in fact, they went... They went to the, 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 one of them had Roman Catholic roots. So I went to a, a Roman Catholic church, and 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 the, and the priest there was very was very welcoming. And and I, when I speak about that story, the phrase I use is, uh, uh, "God doesn't leave God's people without a welcome." So, so somewhere, and, and an open table more more than more than any other certainly is the only network that does this. Is 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 a, is a place where, where where a welcome has been offered. Now, of course, there have been churches like the MCC, Metropolitan Community Church, that, that have offered that welcome for many, many, many years. And, and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, the Church of England is the only church in the world. Uh, and, and of course, w w the, the Church of England as a whole is, 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 is still talking about all these things. And, 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 and I know that for some people that, that is a, a deal breaker. And, 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 and I can understand that. And if, if you've left the Church of England, uh, open Table, of course, is not a Church of England thing. So if, you, if you're in Open Table, but you've left the Church of England, I, I, I do understand that. Please pray for us who are still in there trying to change it, uh, but, but because I do hope and pray um, uh, that, the, that the day will come when, when people like you won't need to leave again. Um, um, uh, but, 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 but that is, it, it is, uh, the, the, any, any church that's diverse has to live with these tensions. But what, what I want to see, I, sometimes I have to say to my conservative friends, that there seems to be room in, uh, in, in my church for you, but, but there isn't any room in your church for me. And, 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 and I, I hope that people, for example, the living out people I was talking about before, if someone says, I describe myself as same-sex attracted but celibate, I would say, well, fine, it's great. But if they then say, and therefore everybody has to be like that, that's where I would draw the line. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so you, we've mentioned conversion therapy a couple of times and it's really topical right now. So it would be remiss of us not to touch on it. Um, and that's one of the um, one of the things that you've spoken about about in your role as chair of the Azan Foundation and as co-chair of the Global Interfaith Commission on LGBT plus lives. So how did you become involved in those organisations and how's that been received? Yeah, so, so again, it's all about people, isn't it? So, so the, the, there are some big personalities in the church. And, 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 and I believe na na nowadays, but because of everything I said earlier about how human beings, it's human lives that make a difference. I, 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 I believe that, that, that there's room for advocacy that, that's, that's, that's done by big personalities. So one of the big personalities in the church is a, a woman called Jane Ozan. So, so, so Jane is a close friend of mine now and, 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 and a dear ally. And, 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 and Jane and I had a, had a, um, a lunch uh, in, in, in London and I said to her, this was before I joined the foundation, uh, I, I, I said to her, Jane, I'm on Team Ozan. I think that your advocacy, because it comes out of your heart, I think that that can make a huge difference in the world. So I'm on Team Ozan, that's the phrase that I used. And then, and then, and then, she, and, and, and then we, we set up a foundation, the Ozan Foundation, 
which which is there to uh, and it's not it's it, it, it's there to the, the, it's a charity and, and and the charitable aims are to address uh, 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 LGBTI prejudice in religious communities around the world and 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 and, and that's what that's what we do and and, and, and the, the foundation operates now at national and international level and one of the things that we did was, was to provide a conference in 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 liaison with the British Foreign Office um, uh, 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 co uh, called the Global Interfaith Commission on LGBTI lives, and that's an interfaith thing. So I, I co-chaired the, the the commission with uh, Rabbi uh, Laura Janaklausner, uh, the, it used to be the, the the leader of the Reformed uh, uh, Ju Ju Judaism in England. She's stepped down from that role now, um, uh, but but Laura and I co-chaired that together with a Muslim guy, Buddhist guy, and so on. And 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 we and we did we did work around that, which 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 flowed among other things uh, uh, from a, a connection that Jane had had uh, with the Pope. Uh, she, she she had a, a friend who introduced her uh, to to the present Pope, Pope Francis, and Jane was able to give the Pope uh, some some of her own materials. And uh, uh, you, you may have seen that this week the Roman Catholic Church has said some pretty unfriendly things about LGBTI people, but also in other parts of the church, they've been very, very, very welcoming. So James Martin, Jesuit guy in America, he, he, he speaks, I think, quite courageously out for uh, LGBTI conversation and inclusion. So, so all that is happening on a global scale. And, 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 I, and I think it needs to be addressed on a global scale. But, but conversion therapy in England uh, r remains an issue. And there have been various exposés, which people on the call may have seen, uh, by uh, TV companies and newsmakers. Uh, uh, and, 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 and sometimes it is, it is frankly horrendously abusive what, what people have done uh, because they believe that uh, being gay uh, means that you are uh, uh, either demon possessed or that you're mentally ill uh, uh, and, 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 stuff, and stuff like that. So, so, that, so, so in 2017, the... Um, the the, uh, the the Church of England made this um, um, uh, 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 passed this motion about conver about conversion therapy. So here's what the synod said: we 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 support the memorandum of understanding on conversion therapy, which the Royal College of Psychiatrists and others have understood have, 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 have written that the practice of gay conversion therapy has no place in the modern world, is unethical, potentially harmful and not supported by evidence. We said that to the government, the government said, you're quite right, we should end it. We said, no, we've asked if, we, we've asked if it could be banned. Mm -hmm. They said, well, it's complicated to ban things, we're just gonna end it. So we said, we, we, we'd, we'd really like you to, and then the prime minister said, I agree it should be banned. So we said, okay, there's the prime minister saying it should be banned, it should be banned. And then the prime minister said, well, it's complicated. It, we might just wanna end it. And anyway, all this to and fro and went on and still is going on. Uh, uh, but, but from my own point of view, having seen the effects of religious conversion therapy on people, not only Christians, but certainly on, on Christians, not only Anglicans, but certainly on Anglicans, having seen the damage done to people's self-understanding, the sense in which they're condemned or they feel self-condemned, the sense in which their lives are broken. Uh, uh, as I wrote in a, in, a, in a tweet that I wrote to the guy who runs the Evangelical Alliance just a couple of days ago, um, um, I, who also said we should end it. I said, yeah, sh we should end it. And the only way I can see to end it is to make it legally, is to make it illegal, is, is, to, is, to, make, is, to, is, to, is to pass a, a thing that says legally, it should be banned. So we've had a couple of questions um, about allyship uh, and advocacy, really. So um, uh, how might allies be more effective is one question and another what practical advice would you give to allies seeking to start reconciliation conversations with conserving, conservative or non-affirming colleagues? It's good to be an ally. And, 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 it, and it's good that people know that you're an ally. So when I, when I began to speak out on this, uh, uh, I, I was involved on a committee, National Church Committee, and a couple of the people on the committee didn't want to be on the committee because I was on it. Uh, and, but they had, the, they had the courage and the grace to come and talk to me about it. And they knew from from what I'd said in the this was the, the this was when the open table sermon was written down. Um, um, they knew from that sermon that I had members of my own family. So so, so I've got I've, I've one of my nieces uh, is, is is in a same sex marriage. Uh, one, another of my nieces was in a civil partnership, and and and, and uh, uh, so I've got personal experience of all of this. 
and, 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 and it was put to me, well, that, that's obviously why you're an ally, Paul. You're an ally because it's all in your own family and you don't want to upset your relatives. Uh, they didn't say that in an accusing way. They just thought that no one's going to be an ally unless, unless it's like that. And, and, and if you're an ally of the LGBTI community, but you don't have anybody in your own family, that's really good. Because the reason to be an ally is because it's right. The, the, the reason to be an ally is because here is a community that is on the edge of things. Uh, when Jesus said we were supposed to be there for people on the edge of things. And, and I love my relatives, but I'm not an ally of the LGBTI community because I got relatives. I mean, it's great that my relatives are, know that I love them, but, but that's not why. It's because it's right. And, and, and that's the thing that communicates. So there's personal friendship that you can be there for folks uh, who know that they can tell you who they are and you won't condemn them. There's personal friendship, but there's also just the sense when you're not with, with other people in the LGBTI world, but you're here in the kind of casual homophobia that you often get uh, on the street or at work or whatever, that, that, that you'll be able then to step up into the brave space and say, actually, I'm an ally of this community. And, 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 and that is, I think that is an honorable calling. And if God is calling you to it, among all the other things that you do, I, I, I really hope that you'll step into that space. And so we talked about um, safe space and brave space and open tables and the challenges of those. And we've had two questions around um, safety and abuse. Um, so do you think there's a growing acknowledgement that the church can be an abusive space? Um, and what advice might you give for reporting homophobic abuse if, the, if someone's in a diocese where it's not as understood and recognized as it may be uh, in, a, in our diocese? Thank you. I mean, those are great questions, and 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 they may—I I don't know who, who asked them—but they may come from a place of personal risk, and and, and so, so I'm grateful for the courage of people who ask those questions. But a lot of conservatives in the church rest what they say on a statement of the Lambeth Conference in 1998, which 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 um, 2008, anyway, whichever it was, which said. Um, um, but, but basically, that the, 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 uh, heterosexual marriage is the only way you can do sex, and 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 um, and, and we need to turn our backs on uh, and, and, and anything else. And that was in the face of what the United States Episcopal Church had done. So there was ructions about that, and 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 that was a very hardline statement with which I personally do, do not agree. But it went on to say, and and we oppose homophobia in all its forms around the world. And, 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 and to speak now as an Anglican, the, in, in other churches, they approach these things different ways. But everybody signed up to that. Now, the fact is, you get active and sometimes aggressive homophobia in churches. Uh, for, it, it, you get people standing up and saying, putting it crudely, but they say this just this straight. You are an abomination, they say, because it says that in a Bible, in some translations about something. Um, um, now, if there are people like that, and, and you suffer that, and, and the leaders of that church don't deal with it, that, that, then, then and, and, and again, it's hard. People of all kinds of abuse know this. If you, if you step forward as someone who's been abused, it takes a lot of courage. And, 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 I, and I do understand that. Um, um, but but, 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 but if, if you've got the support to, to, to make a brave space out of that, 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 then you need to call it out. And, and, and if the leaders of the church say, oh, I'm sure he didn't mean it and anyway, perhaps it might be true, or, or whatever they might say that marginalizes you still further, then, then it should be possible to call it out at regional level with, with, the, with, with the local bishop or archdeacon. Now, 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 of course, there are some deeply conservative bishops, but, but my hope is that they all remember, and, and I have no evidence that they don't, that they all remember uh, what we all signed up to, that homophobia is in every case wrong. And, 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 and so, so to say that to people. Now, it, it's easy for me to say that because I've never been in that situation where people have opposed me for my own sexual orientation identity. And, 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 and so I, I'm not saying to you, put yourself in an unsafe space, but, 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 but I am saying if you can get the support that, 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 that you need, uh, then, 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 then call it out. It, 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 because this kind of stuff has got to be called out 
and 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 you may have seen you you know the the, the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, 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 on a number of occasions has said you know we 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 we've got to call this stuff out and and that's without prejudice to what the church might do with living in love and faith and all of that we don't know what those decisions will be but today homophobia is supposed to be. Uh, a, 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 a pariah thing in the church. We're not supposed to support it. And anybody who does support it is going against what we all believe is right. And, 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 and I hope and pray that you'll have the strength to call it out. So we've had a, a question related to that from uh, Warren who asked, what was the turning point for you in speaking out? So where do you turn for your courage to speak? Thanks, Warren. The, the, I mean, you, you yourself and Kieran and, and, and that, that evening at Open Table when I looked around the room and, and, I, and, I, and I saw the gift that you guys could give and I also saw the pastoral care you were offering to a whole bunch of people who wouldn't have got that care anywhere else. That, that was a turning point for me. And, 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 and when I left that picture behind, I did get another one, by the way. It's on the wall. You can't see it on this screen. But I got Yvonne to send me another one. So maybe I'll give that away one day. But, but that, you, you know, you said, can I record the talk? And I, and I said, yeah, because I didn't mind that what, what I believed should be said out loud. And, the, the, and, 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 I, and, and, and the support and love that I've had, for, 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 I mean, it has been from my own family and especially from my own kids. And, 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 and my, my, my children have, have, have said to me that their own friends, my children's friends, that those, who, those who, you know, I'm not that famous, but, 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 but those who see now and again the kind of things that I've said, that they have said, you know, can you tell your dad that he's doing the right thing? And, and so, so that, that kind of support, from my children's generation means the world to me. Uh, uh, there are groups, of course, of people in the church, in, in my own denomination, the Church of England, uh, uh, bishops and, 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 and others who, who, who are uh, pro progressive-minded and, 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 and who try to support each other. Um, and there's a whole bunch of people, uh, such as the ones I've talked about in the GIC, Global Interfaith Commission, from other faiths as well, who, who, who want to support each other. Uh, Steve Chalk, my friend Steve Chalk, Baptist minister down there in London, uh, uh, he, he's been a great inspiration to me uh, uh, because of his own stance and, and, and his own and his own courage. So, so, so I do feel I, I do feel thoroughly supported. I, I said something once on social media, which drew in one day eight hundred abusive replies, and and and, and when I say abusive. Uh, you know, you can't, it's, this is a family audience. I won't tell you what these people were saying. Um, but I put a filter on, 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 uh, on the replies that simply filtered out the ones who hadn't given their real name, you know, the anonymous ones. And they all stopped, every one of them. In, in other words, a lot of the opposition you get is from robots or from, or from folks in America in, 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 with, with nothing better to do with their lives. And, and, and it really doesn't do to be too intimidated by that stuff. Um, um, so, so I've found the support of people, real people that I love, and I've found actually a lot of the opposition is shallow stuff. We've had a question from someone who's mindful of, of you know, cr Christians who are saying that if the LLF process takes the Church of England in a particular way, then they will leave. So um, how can those of us who are committed to um, such uh, the processes in our churches steer the conversation away from this kind of ultimatum? Yeah, it's a good question. The, 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 there's a guy, I, I said this in the House of Bishops actually two years ago, there's a, it, nothing to do with this issue or with the church, but the, uh, in, in the Republican Party in America, a, a, a commentator, famous commentator, David Frum, he said, people who stand near the door get a lot of attention. Um, um, uh, at that time, it was the time of Donald Trump, you know, and people were saying, we're going to leave, we're going to start a new party, all this stuff. And, and, and if, you, if, if, you, if you say that, you get attention. And, 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 but in the, in, in the end, we should decide what we're going to do on the grounds that it's right or not. If it's right, let's do it. If people say, if, if, if you do it, I'm leaving, th then we go back to a, a, an earlier part of the conversation that we, we do our best to say to these people, we, there's room in our church for you. But if they say there's no, room in, there's, no, there's no room in our church for you and they leave, 
then we've got a situation for ecumenical conversation. And, 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 and of course, we know churches, uh, 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 the, the many churches, including the two largest churches in the world, that, 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 that have not yet changed their teaching, even if the Church of England did on these matters. But we have great relationships with those people, ecumenical relationships. And if it has to come to that, then we'll have ecumenical relationships with, with conservative people. Uh, but I hope and pray that it doesn't come to that. And I hope and pray that as with, for example, the remarriage of divorced people in church, I hope and pray that in the church you can have people who, who, whose conscience says that's not right. I was talking earlier about living out, you know, pe people who choose to be celibate because of what they believe. And you can have people who are partnered and in love and their love is blessed and they're married and it's all inside the same church. That, that's what I'm pitching for. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, what a vision. Uh, and so maybe just to draw us to a close, um, you've written eloquently about the table. Um, if you could sit at a table with anyone, alive or uh, gone before us, who would that be? So the guy, the presiding bishop in the United States, a guy called Michael Curry, um, uh, he preached uh, the, the sermon at the Harry and Meghan wedding, um, uh, you may remember. Um, I've actually sat at a table with Michael, Archbishop Michael, when, when I was on sabbatical over there in New York. He took me for lunch. And, 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 and I'd love to have another, another meal with him at the table. So that so would that'd, that'd be great, to have, to have him at the table. And, 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 there's, and there's a woman uh, 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 called Sarah Miles, who's written a number of books, uh, and lives in San Francisco. Uh, and, and Sarah's just fantastic. So, so if she was at the table. So I've got a couple of Americans there. And, and then the, the third one, he's, he is still alive, but, but we'd probably have to, 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 to make sure it was a short meal because he's very elderly now. But that's Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa, who, 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 who again has spoken out bravely on these things. So if it was me and Archbishop Desmond, Sarah Miles and, and, uh, and Michael Curry, we'd have a fantastic meal. I can, I can well imagine. Thank you so much. And uh, it feels like we could go on uh, a lot longer here tonight as well. I look forward to being able to sit at a table with you again before long. Um, we've had a phenomenal number of comments in the chat. We've had a phenomenal number of questions. I'm really mindful that we weren't able to get through all of them. Um, there were some that felt um, maybe perhaps beyond the scope of the time that we've had here tonight. So if I might um, put people in touch with you to yeah. explore those. Um, That's great, I'll do. You can ask what questions you like. I may not know the answers, but you're welcome to ask. So Bishop Paul, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for walking alongside us. Um, thank you for being a catalyst in the growth of the Open Table Network, for being a patron um, and cheerleader, um, for your um, role as an ally and advocate in so many uh, high profile ways and for fielding the flack so that some of us don't have to. Um, Thank you very much indeed. And thank you all for, uh, for, for, for still being here at the end. Great to be with you. And our next webinar is uh, uh, on the 15th of April, the third Thursday of the month again. And it's with our patron, John Bell. Um, and he is a hymn writer, a Church of Scotland minister and a member of the Iona community, uh, which works for peace, social justice, rebuilding community and the renewal of worship. And John Bell, um, came out on the stage at Greenbelt in 2017 as a gay man in response to the death of Lizzie Lowe, a 14 year old in Manchester who took her own life because she was afraid to tell her parents about her sexuality. It's been an absolute delight to share this evening with you tonight. Um, we look forward to welcoming you again in person before long and online again soon. Thank you very much everyone. Go well and God bless. <laughs>